Good day, Glowforge and Tinkercad friends. I made this project a while back, and I started to print it the other day, and I noticed something I could fix. So my friends, let's get cracking. All right, so the first thing that showed up was my cardboard that I'm cutting these boxes from is smaller than the Glowforge bed. And I have been using two pieces of cardboard, and I said, what if I found a way to squeeze these all into one piece of cardboard? So I went and tracked down my cardboard, and I measured it, and now I'm gonna change my grid so it fits. So I found that the grid was 40 centimeters, so I'm gonna back this up to 400, and I had already started to shrink it. And then my maximum length is 270. So I'm gonna back that up and change it. So now when I'm actually designing, I'll be able to see the correct size that I've got room to play for. So if you're a student in my class and you're building this, I want you to make sure you use 400 by 270 because that fits the boxes that we're able to snag from the lunchroom, which is our free resource. If you're at home, you should measure your boxes, find the side you wanna use most, and use that same number as well. So then I took this design and I exported it as an SVG, just like we always do, and I opened it in Inkscape. I'm gonna click file and open it. And what I chose to do was I chose to smooth it. So if we look in here, I've got this one called Too Smooth. So this is where I opened it. And when you load it, you'll notice that nothing shows up. So the first thing I like to fix is under document properties, these always come in with display units pixels. So I'm gonna change it to millimeters. Then I'm gonna do control A to grab everything. And with everything selected, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna set the stroke to red. I'm also gonna to go to the stroke style. Instead of 0.04, I'm gonna type 0.25. And now we can actually see the pieces I brought in. Now you'll notice I only brought in one of each and that's because I'm gonna clean these up so that they're better for when we cut them. The first thing I wanna do is click path and I want to break apart. Now they're all in separate pieces. I'm gonna do Control A again, and this time I'm gonna left click on the fill so there's no fill, because I don't want fill on these projects. All right, friends, so let's click on a path, and let's check how many nodes it has. That is a boatload of them. So if we do Path Simplify, check it out. It makes it more clean, but still keeps the same shape. You can do that on every one of these little pieces. I'm not gonna show you me doing it, but I will do two of them quickly so you can see just how simple it is. Now I'm gonna grab this entire part and I'm gonna group it. Object, group. So then when I bring this into the Glowforge, I will be able to adjust each of these pieces separately. Previously, if you loaded my file from Thingiverse, you had to work with it the exact size it was. Now you should be able to adjust it on your Glowforge software. All right, friends, so here is the final project. I have taken and arranged all the pieces so they fit on that one piece of cardboard. So now when I throw it in the Glowforge, I can set that cardboard in there. And about 15 to 20 minutes later, I have got another cardboard copter that can be cut out. Uh, these pieces right here, I totally designed in Inkscape just because it's so fast. If you do choose to do this, remember if you hold control, it stays the perfect shape. And then up here, I knew that I needed a 15. So I just typed 7.5 in the box so I could get my size 15 and then my size six hole on the inside. So those parts were not made in Tinkercad for this project. And then of course, when I was done, I did file save as, and I sent this SVG to my hard drive and I uploaded it to Thingiverse so you guys can use it as well. All right, friends, so here you can see I have loaded it in the Glowforge. I'm gonna select it all, and I'm gonna nudge it just a little bit over so that I'm sure that it's on. I will peel off the labels later. Uh, there's a little bit of tape on the box. You'll notice I put that on the upside so that the laser cuts through it. Otherwise, I'd had to cut it from underneath later, and I found that that works a lot better. Real quickly, my settings I use for my cardboard, and remember your cardboard will be different most likely, is 145 for the speed, 75 for the power, and it is four millimeters thick, and I do it in one pass. All right, so let's go make something magical. All right, so I'm skipping the time lapse and just showing you how it fits. I will show you this though. Um, I have started taking another sheet of cardboard and sliding it under it as quick as I can. And I usually still have to pick up the little holes, but at least I don't drop any other stuff. So if you're a student in my classroom, you'll get one of these sheets, 
and then you can simply follow the little time lapse I have for how to assemble it. All right, friends, so step one is to sort your parts. Find the two outsides, find the four insides, find the two middle that'll hold the straw, and then find the other two middle that don't. Ask me for a glue bottle, make sure you take the cap off, and find the two that will hold the rotor and the blades, and glue them together, making sure that you push out all the little pieces of cardboard first. With the center ones glued, we're going to glue one on the outside of each of these. I find it easiest to glue the first one on top, and then I'll glue the other on the bottom. You may use two or four of these depending on how fat you want your copter to be. I have seen both turn out pretty sweet. Glue two together, and then glue two together, and then glue them to both sides of your current copter parts. Now we simply close it up with one of these on each side. In my room, make sure you grab the clear straws, cut off a little more than an inch, find two of the little hole filled ones and it's going to poke through but this one we use hot glue so just put a little dab of hot glue on the straw and then when you slide it in the hole make sure that the straw goes down in and then those little bearings hold it up so you can mount your propeller add another one of the little bearings and then push it down just a tiny bit and put a cap on top. So there should be enough room for your propeller to totally spin and not hit the back. You don't want to push that down too tight though and you want to let it cool. The stabilizers in the back are the same idea but this one will actually measure. So I'm going to tell you to make it about as wide as the whole copter. And then when you slide it on, you can put both of your little propellers. Notice I put that one with the paper facing in. Then I'm going to put a bearing. So just a tiny bit of glue. And then we can cap it so it stays. Notice it still spins. Put the other one. And put the bearing. And this one needs to be clipped just a hair. Then I can space that out so it has room to spin. And add that cap. Same trick. And after a few moments of assembly, you have got a fun little copter and a need to go wash your hands. Alright friends, so there you have it. Cute little copter. I love this project because it's made out of cardboard, which is free at my classroom. They get to use the laser cutter, they get to use Tinkercad. I got to use Inkscape and use that fun skill, and they end up having a lot of fun with a sweet little project. So friends, if you look on the screen, my Thingiverse one is the one where it only has one of these little inserts in the middle. Instead of where I did two today, you can pick which one you think is more cool and assemble it as you want. Friends, that Thingiverse link will be in the description. And of course, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you've got a question, comment, or suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit that notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL Mod Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.